So you may have just recently picked up a new Sony camera, whether that's an FX3, an A7S III, or an A7 IV, or you may have had these cameras for a while and you still don't really know which video codec to choose. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going through all of the three available codecs that you can choose, the pros and cons of them, and which one is best for you. So video codecs are essentially the format that your camera is going to use to convert your images to- <sighs> Sorry. The compression format that your camera is going- <sighs> My bad, my bad. Do you mind? I'm sorry, you're boring me. What do you mean? I am dropping some serious value here. Okay, if you sit, you know what, you know what? Yeah, here we go. To sleep. Gosh, there's so many cables and stuff in here. Like, you don't think this is a bit of a health and safety yeah, issue? Safety. No. And why is it so dark in here? Like, you trying to be cinematic? Why are you even here? Whoa, take it easy, man. I'm just gonna be showing the wonderful people here how to actually understand these video codecs without putting them to sleep. <sighs> be my guest. Thank you. Thank you. So because I don't like it so dark, I'm going to be doing this outside to explain to you about video codecs. So we, we know that we have three video codecs on the Sony lineup. We have XAVC-S, XAVC-HS, and XAVC-SI. Terrible names, but we have to go with it. So to help you further understand what these codecs are and the differences between them, I'm going to be using a suitcase analogy. So in the suitcase, there are clothes. The clothes are the amount of videos you can have on the SD card and the SD card is the suitcase. Yeah, that makes sense. The SD card is a suitcase and the clothes are the files. So this is a fairly small suitcase. So let's say the suitcase is 64 gigabytes because you can get bigger suitcases, you can get bigger SD cards, but suitcase is the SD card. The clothes are the video files or the amount of videos you can have. So if we start off with XABC HS, inside this SD card, we have a lot of videos. So you can see there's loads and loads of clothes, probably should have folded them a bit better, but there are loads of clothes inside this suitcase, which means inside or on a 64 gigabyte SD card, we can get loads and loads of files. But in that same 64 gigabyte SD card, so if we use this same suitcase, on XAVC SI, you can see there's now a lot less clothes. So the same size suitcase, the same size SD card, there's a lot less inside the SD card. But even though there's less, these are of much higher quality. And that is the reason why XABC SI takes up so much more space. So you have to look at the different factors when you are choosing which codec to look at. And the first main factor is the amount of space that each one causes. And I'll further illustrate that to you on the camera. So as you can see in the top left, we have two hours and 22 minutes of record time when we are using XAVC HS. Um, this is recording at 24 frames per second on a 120 gigabyte card. I don't think the card is quite empty, but it's near enough. So you can see we have two hours and 22 minutes. But if we then change this format to XABCI, um, change this to make it fair to 24P, you can see we now have an hour, just over an hour of recording time. So that just shows how much more space XABCSI would use for the same card, the same amount of storage available, same recording type, so we are on 24 frames per second, you get less than half the amount of time available to be able to record on this SD card. And that is one of the biggest factors to take into consideration when you are choosing your file format. So now you understand the first factor being the storage of the video codex, I'm only breaking down the other two factors that will help determine your decision. And the next one being the video quality. Now, all of these video codecs record very good quality, you know, the FX3, the A74, the A7S3, they all produce great quality, but there are slight differences between each of the codecs. So if you start the largest, XAVC-I, all intra, that produces the best quality. Why? Just because it compresses it the least, you know, that's why the file sizes are so big, because there's the least amount of compression happening to those images. So yes, you do get a fantastic quality, but Mm, this file sizes, that's an option for you to weigh up. Next in the middle is XAVCS, and you think, kind of going down in order of file sizes, that this would be the next best file, um, next best image quality. But surprisingly, XAVCHS comes in front of it. Even though it compresses it a lot more, the image quality from the most compressed XAVCHS codec actually produces the second best image quality available on your camera which means obviously XAVCS comes in last in image quality. So now it's like, 
Image quality is great on XAVCI, XAVCHS, and XAVCS. Kind of seems to be like the worst option so far, you know, right? It has the second most amount of storage and it has the worst quality. So why would you ever choose it? Well, that all depends on where you're gonna be putting these files. So if you, most laptops, most computers, most editing devices kind of struggle with H.265 or XAVCHS, because it is so compressed and so tightly wrapped, it means the computers in your editing software just struggles to actually play it back because it has to unravel so much data, so much code, it struggles to play it back. Now, if you have one of the new Apple M1s, whether it's the MacBook Pro Studio or even just an Air, they have, I should don't quote me on that, I don't know about the Airs, but the new ones definitely have codecs that are specifically designed to open up those types of files. So like the H.265, the XAVC HS, those are specifically made, well, they have codecs specifically for reading those files. But if you don't have them, those aren't the best files for you. When you do put them into your laptop, you will be struggling to play it back. That like will be quite choppy just because these videos are so compressed. So it kind of depends. For me personally, I use XAVC HS because the quality difference between I and HS is not that much. Like, yes, there's little bits, there's time and places, but for most things, you can't really see the difference. And I have one of the new M1s, so I am able to go through that fluidly. But if I was still editing on my old Intel MacBook, I probably would still be using XAVCS just because I would prefer the slightly better editing process than that tiny increase in quality. So yeah, it really depends on what kind of editing software you're gonna be using, and those are the three main factors. So as I said, if you have a lot of SD cards that you wanna kinda of wanna run through all the space and you don't really care about file size, you just want the best image quality, XAVCI is obviously the best option for you. If you're in that middle ground where you want a lot of file size, so you want to use as much file size as possible, but you also want great quality, I would use XAVC HS, but obviously it depends on where you will be editing these. And lastly, if you kinda of want to stat very 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 middle where it's not the best quality not the most best in storage solutions but you can have an okay editing process i would choose xabc s yeah i think that makes sense so if you have got a lesson laugh or a light bulb moment from this video i'd really appreciate if you drop a like down below and if you're feeling extra nice you could hit the subscribe button but of that being said i will catch you in the next one see ya